Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. Today we are going to discuss about uh, these four properties which we used to set in Spark Submit command during execution, right? So these four properties are very important for your Spark application when you do a Spark Submit. And uh, today we are going to just to discuss what these properties are all about and for uh, uh, we used to give values for these properties but I have made a separate video how to calculate those values so I have given that video link in the description box of this video I recommend you to watch that video after this fine so now now imagine you have a cluster okay so you have some uh, uh, six node of cluster so you have five plus one six. Now let's uh, have uh, let's let's say like we do have some input data and these data has been partitioned in Spark. So while reading it it will it will do a partition and on top of these partitions your input data will be get splitted into small small partition and for these partition uh, uh, the task will be get created based on what program that you have written and these task is nothing but the code what you have written has been splitted into small task and these tasks will be get executed on top of the partition in parallel fine now what about executor now imagine uh, this executor is just a JVM imagine it's just a, a kind of a container okay so what this container will do it will just this executor will get created in any one of your node for example you take this node okay so now an executor got created within this node okay so executor one okay so what this executor will do this executor will create task so task one task two task three etc oh imagine it creates five tasks within this executor so this executor is just a jvm and this executor has a memory within that given memory executor will create these tasks and these tasks is nothing but the code what you have written so that code is get executed as small small task on top of your input data which is get which is got partitioned already so here this number of tasks within this executor like for example i have five tasks and whether all these these five tasks will run in parallel or one by one or sequential now the answer is if you take this executor cores so core is nothing but the CPU okay the CPU that we have like a quad core uh, like a i3 core right so core processor so core is nothing but it's a CPU fine so here this executor core will have a value for example if I give value as 3 that means this particular executor can run three tasks at same time in parallel now if you give this executor can have so many tasks but this executor at a time at a given time the executor can run only three parallel tasks for example if i give five here now this executor can run five parallel tasks at the same time so what happen if this particular executor cannot uh, run all the five at the same time so even though you have given five here but still this particular executor doesn't have the capacity or the resource to run all the five in parallel in that case what will what it will do right imagine now executor has uh, resource to run three tasks at parallel but you have given five here so what it will do it will create five tasks but it will run only three in parallel first so once this is completed or some other task comp completed and the resource got free these two will get picked up okay so whatever you are giving here we are just informing the executor can run five tasks at maximum in parallel so if the resource is not ready then executor will understand on its own and it will just run as much as much as possible it will run in parallel and the remaining task will be in queue now this executor core whatever the executor core value you are giving which is denoting the number of maximum tasks that an executor can run in parallel so executor is a jvm it's a container within that your task will be get executed now this executor needs some memory to allocate for all these tasks right and that is what we are giving it an executor memory okay and number of executor is something you have to decide how many executor you need for example i need 10 executor to complete this job and each executor can have five tasks at maximum run in parallel then 10 into 5 totally you will be having 50 tasks okay so this 10 executor so how this executor will be get created in the slave nodes that is worker nodes imagine this first node can have one executor maybe the third node can have executor 3 and executor 7 that means same node can have more than one executors okay so one i have explained this concept recently to some some of uh, my friends and they have asked me this question they asked me like this so when i give number of executor as 10 each node will have 10 executor no that is wrong 
when you give number of executor as 10 that is for your cluster it's not for each node so for that particular job the application you need a 10 executor and this 10 executor will be get created across the cluster the, across the nodes in the cluster uh, so this executor this node can have one executor this node can have two executor and this node can be empty and next node can have one executor like eight executor eight something like that so each executor is a container which will have group of tasks and this task can be uh, uh, like we can determine like how many parallel tasks can run with this property executor core so core is nothing but the cpu allocation that you are giving for your task okay so now at finally we are coming to driver memory so what is driver memory so you have a main method in your code right so this main we call it as a driver so when you do a spark submit okay so when you do a spark submit the driver will be get created so the mission from which you are sending and spark submit the driver will be get created so this driver will communicate with the master so if it is a spark then master if it is yawn then it communicates with the application master and this driver what it will do right so this particular driver will communicate with the master or application master and then it will coordinate the jobs that the task which is running in parallel in the slave nodes so once it is completed the driver will be also get it, it will be also get completed and then your job will your code will come out means your job will come out and then you will be getting the output now this driver memory is some something that is very important uh, when there is no uh, complex uh, or uh, not recommended actions for example if you use collect or take what it will do so the driver will be get running in one node okay so when you give collect or take what it will do right it will just get all the data from the uh, total number of slaves for example each node is processing some one one gb of data and finally like you are getting all these data like five nodes are processing your uh input data and each node is processing each executor is processing 1 GB and that means finally you will be getting 5 GB and you are bringing all these 5 GB with the using collect action what it will do right if you use collect what it will do right it will bring all these uh, 5 GB data to your driver which is running in one node and for driver memory for this program if you give just 2 GB right it will fail because you are bringing all the 5 GB of data to one uh, place which is your driver so this driver is runs in a one node and you can you, you can ask me whether all the actions or uh, like it will run uh, all the actions will be uh, getting the data to driver no it's not like that we do have something like save as text file this action will run in parallel you don't worry okay so for this and all you can give for a driver memory you can give 1 gb to 2 gb is wide enough okay only uh, actions the dangerous actions like collect or take will bring the complete data to the driver so don't use uh, such actions so we do have some usage of those two but uh, but i will explain that in a different video when to use and when uh, you should not so for now driver memory is something that you are giving us just to coordinate your tasks with master okay so thanks for watching this video if you really like this video please do subscribe my channel and forward this to your friends and colleagues so we do have a lot of tech videos not only big data videos i do have a lot of other tech videos as well and i created a separate playlist called big data course and the playlist link has been shared in the description box you can have a look which will have the order of all the big data uh, lessons from one to last and i will be keep on adding more videos to that playlist in an order so please touch uh, stay touch with my playlist and thanks for watching my channel